welcome to Families for Life with Brian and Brian, a podcast at Oak Hill Baptist Church. On today's episode, we're going to talk about health as a spiritual discipline, part one. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, Brian Van Doren. Brian Gocher, how's it going, man? Doing well. Doing Good. well. Well, Glad cool. to be starting a new series with you today. Yeah, I'm excited. We've uh, we've had some good series so far, mm-hmm. and uh, I'm hoping that this one. I'm sure this one's going to. So it's a little different. Too. It's not Absolutely. necessarily targeted at parents or families. It's targeted at really at anyone. Yeah, that's right. So, and I do. I will say though, I think that this is a very important topic for parents to think through because we are the ones who really, you know, dictate and control what how our kids eat and their, their health and their activity and things right. like that. But what I, what we find for ourselves is, uh, we all struggle with this, right. you know, this is something I think we all need to really think about and talk about is our health. Yeah. Yeah. We wanted to take a little bit of time to just talk about health. You know, so much of our life is, uh, you know, it, we, we live it in the body of course. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, it's important to, even as a Christian, we're going to unpack what that means and how that applies to our lives. And so this is not meant to be a judgment or right. anything. This is meant to be challenging, but also very encouraging. Uh, we are very realistic in our mm-hmm. view of the body. We're also very biblical. And so I think we'll strike a really good balance today of hopefully encouraging you and also maybe challenging you a little bit. Yeah. And in these three parts that we're going to be doing, we're going to be looking today at the theology of health Mm -hmm. and how the Bible really does have a lot to say about how we take care of ourselves and and why we do that. Because, you know, we can take care of ourselves and be really healthy for the wrong reasons. Right. Um, But we're going to talk about that. We're going to be talking about food and, and things like that in another part. And we're going to be talking about um, just exercise and, and practical steps to take in another part. So right. um, we're hoping this will be a really um, thought provoking, but also a very practical uh, series that people can listen to and be like, ah, oh, this is what I can do. Right. That's going to be really helpful. Right. Yeah. So um, let's start out. Let's kind of give people a background of where we where we're at in. Yeah. You know, this is, I know for you and me has been a really great year in the area of health. Mm -hmm. 2020, we've not let it get us down. You know, people keep saying it's the worst year, but you know, in this area, we've really, you and I both have kind of stepped up in uh, the area of health. So maybe give us a little bit of your history and and maybe some things that you've changed this year. Well, yeah. So for me, you know, uh, growing up, I've always been a pretty uh, athletic person. I was never really good at specific sports, but I was always really athletic in general. And, um, I loved being outside and just climbing trees and playing and doing all the active things that I could do as much as possible. Um, but as I got a little bit older in my teens, I, I, (laughs) even in my teen years, I realized that my metabolism was slowing down. I wasn't as active. I was, you know, doing more things inside, less outside. (laughs) And I started started feeling the results of that. And I had a had a friend from church, an older man in church, ask me if I wanted to go work out with him. So I started working out with him. And this guy, very seasoned, uh, super knowledgeable um, guy. He he yeah he martial arts, all sorts of things. He's a marine guy. Knew what he was talking about. And he taught me how to work out. And as I was working out at this gym, I eventually got a job there and uh, just trained, learned, did all the things I needed to do, and eventually became a personal trainer. Um, I wasn't like a super successful personal trainer or anything like that, but I definitely, you know, knew what I had to do. And I trained several people and, and had a really good time with that. Taught you a lot about the body and oh, yeah. exercise. And yeah. Everything. So I knew, I, yeah, like there, <laughs> I've forgotten a lot, that's for sure. But, uh, it was such a good thing for me, just a good base, you know, being a young man, having all of this, um, just kind of this work ethic, this, mm-hmm. this desire to keep my body healthy. Right. It was really good for me then. But then as I got older and got busy, you know, all these things happened in life and uh, it kind of went away. And then a couple years ago, uh, something that really burdened me was I was playing softball with our church mm-hmm. league and I just, just broke my ankle and, um, uh, and it was, really uh, surprising. It was probably the first time that I realized that my body is not Mm. um, 
impervious. Mm -hmm. Even though I knew that, I wasn't trying mm -hmm. to be, you know, arrogant about any right. of that. I knew that it wasn't was right. breakable, but I hadn't experienced well, it yet. Yeah, you do things at a, at a hundred and ten percent. Yeah, <laughs> you you don't have a hundred percent. It's always one hundred and ten. It's all the way, man. And so church um, league softball. I'm gonna I'm gonna. <laughs> Get that base. I'm going to break my ankle to do this. And I did. <laughs> and um, yeah. And so it really, you know, made me realize. And that at that time, my wife was pregnant with our first son. And and I was like, my some of my first thoughts were, I'm not going to be able to take my boy hiking. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be able to do the things that mm -hmm. my dad did with me. Right. Some of the monumental and pivotal things that, that helped me experience awesome things in life. So for me, I was like, man, I've got to get, I've got to get back in shape. I got to take care of this, this ankle. I've got to take care of my body. I've got to make sure that my life is mm -hmm. going to be, I'm going to be able to live it for other people. Mm, like I can't good. even enjoy my own life, much less live it for other people. If I'm not, if I'm not healthy, mm, that's good. So that was a big deal for me. And it's helped me really just push hard and get accountable, get a workout partner and, and make it happen, mm -hmm. especially when I don't want to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, that's what good. about, what about you, Brian? Yeah. Uh, you know, I <clears throat> did not grow up athletic. I did, uh, you know, have a buddy whose dad ran the YMCA and around junior, senior year, we would work out a lot. So that was about the extent of my working out. Um, you know, really just doing life and doing ministry. As I went to college, uh, I worked, you know, a part-time job, went to school full-time and you find yourself just eating whatever you can mm -hmm. eat, you know, quick meals, garbage, you know, you run through McDonald's real quick on your way to class, oh, or yeah. you get back and you eat some macaroni and cheese or ramen or something. And the college years are just super unhealthy. Oh yeah. And so, uh, <laughs> you know, that's where I picked up some weight and then continued to just, you know, focus on ministry, focus on my family, but not really on my health. Mm -hmm. And so through the last, oh, say 20 years, not really focusing on, but really, to be honest, you know, uh, had sort of that, um, that agile, that agile fat guy, you know, like mm, Jack yeah. Black, you that know, that is very true. I was able to I was really able to move and do things and not, it didn't really affect me till a couple of years ago. And they say things do catch up to you. I remember a couple of years ago, we did the last 4th of July, big 4th of July event on a Sunday. We did, we did all morning. Mm -hmm. Then we went and set up for the event and we're going late into the evening till like nine o'clock. Well, by seven o'clock, I was just toast. My, my, my knees were hurting. My ankles were hurting. I was just exhausted and I just thought, you know, this, I don't have the energy to continue to do this, you know? So anyway, I was, I also noticed like it was, took me longer to recover from mm -hmm. things, you know, events and activities and, and just starting to lose a step basically, yeah. you know, one of the things that really affected me was last October, we, we went on a mission trip to Jamaica. We have a gentleman that went with us who's a senior citizen and he outworked oh, yeah. me. He, he outworked course, everybody, oh, yeah. but it was very convicting. Like if I want to be going on mission trips into my senior adult years and I want to be active, uh, something's got to change. Yeah. And so I started really just kind of saying, okay, Lord, what do I need to do differently? How do I need to go about this? I knew that things had to change in the area of food and the area of exercise, but I had done a lot of these things in the past yeah. and had failed, yeah. you know? So I started asking my friends and saying, Hey, do you want to go to the gym? Do you want to join the gym? Well, one of my other friends said, Hey, yeah, I'll go to the gym with you. So around January, it took a, takes a few months mm -hmm. to kind of get motivated around January. We joined a gym and you know, we, we started jo joining the gym and, and it really was one of those things that uh, was encouraging because it was meeting there with a friend. You know, it, it was hard. I, I'll be honest, mm -hmm. you know, when you're, extremely overweight and you go to the gym, it, it sucks yeah. because you can't do a lot and it, it hurts. And it's just, it's that whole process, but we had encouragement. We encouraged each other. And so that was really, uh, <clears throat> really good quarantine hit yep. in March. Uh, and so that would have been a good time to not go to the gym. We are my gym closed, but, uh, I found strength and encouragement in my wife. Yeah and other people to keep going. And so we did home workouts through that whole period. And so we kept working out 
and I really did see some um, some progress. I started to eat better, you know, cutting out sugar, limiting portions, and I saw a little change. A little mm-hmm. bit of weight came off, uh, but it nothing major. Well, when we got back to the gym in May, I felt reinvigorated. And I started using a food diary app that helped me to track my calories and keep my calories around 2000 and now under 2000 calories. So I could really start losing weight. And to be honest, now it's not really about losing weight. It's about being healthy. Right. Part of that is losing weight. Of course, that's, that's part of it. Uh, People see me now that maybe haven't seen me in a few months. Like, Oh my gosh, what, what Mm -hmm. did you do? What, what's going on? And we'll talk more about specifics as we get into food and exercise, but you know, it's, it's just simple. It's, it's watching what I eat, monitoring my calories and working out. And, and that's it. That's the simple way. There's no special diet. There's no nothing. It's just uh, down at, you know, I'm 60 pounds down Yeah, and you know, I feel stronger than ever. And I do feel, um, you know, we had a test here the last couple of weeks with a really vigorous schedule. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, we had a ton of stuff going on. Yeah. Uh, I did get, uh, I did at the end of the run there, I, right. I was, I was tired, yes. but I think all of us were tired right. because it just been an extremely like day and night and we had events going on and mm-hmm. we had meetings and just all kinds of stuff. So last Saturday when we, when we were done, <clears throat> I did have to kind of recoup, but I, my body was not like yeah. hurting. Do you yeah. know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. And, and it was just, it was just, it was just fatigue more right. than anything. And so I felt really good about that. I felt like, okay, I'm really starting to make some progress and, and hitting those kind of goals. So I feel better, more energy, uh, able to keep going and not be tired. Um, so it, it's, it feels, it feels really good. You know, like I said, I'll talk more about the transformation coming up, but for now, I really just want to give God all the glory this transformation is only possible because of him. And that's kind of what I want to talk about because I would not be able to be healthier and be in the situation without the Lord really kind of guiding my steps and helping me to do this. Yeah. And I would even just, you know, being here, being kind of, uh, watching this, being close, you know, to you as you've been doing this journey. And, uh, and it's also been encouraging to me to, to really, you know, to keep going, you know, and, um, you know, talking about workouts and things and seeing how, how disciplined do you want to be has made me be like, man, I really want to make sure I'm, I'm doing that, uh, as well, but it's been, it's definitely been the Lord working, right. you know, and that's what this is all about is this, this is a spiritual discipline. Right. Um, and that's what we're talking about is the fact that it's not about, um, it's not, it's not really about just getting, what you want. Right. It's not about achieving goals that you want for selfish reasons. It's really about disciplining our lives right. so that in the area of our health, we are able to glorify God. Right. Yeah. The first thing I began to do is just to pray and ask God to help me get my mind in the right place, have the mm-hmm. right perspective, and really just to be disciplined and self-controlled. And that that is the key. I, you know, if you're sitting there and you want to be healthy or you want to get healthy, um, you got to start with the Lord. That's right. God can help you do this. And I could not have done it without him. So, you know, I think it'd be good to kind of break down a biblical theology uh, of what it means to care for the body. You know, Christians should care about this. It's, it's based in God's word. I really think that uh, we can't overlook this. There is a lot. I mean, the Bible talks a lot about our spiritual health, right? But it also talks about our physical well-being as well. Well, and that's the first thing in this. If we're going to talk about the the theology of of a healthy body, we have to remember that God made us as you know as whole people. Right. We were created by God as human beings with with bodies and souls. We're not right. just spirit. You know, when we when Christ returns, you know, when we live with Him forever and ever, He's going to. He's going to give us new bodies. Right. Um, our our bodies will be renewed, and we're going to have a, a body right. in the new heavens and the new earth. And so, so this is spiritual, even yeah. though we're talking about um, taking care of our our non spiritual bodies. Exactly. You know, we go to Deuteronomy six, and God says we're to love the Lord our God with our heart soul, mind, and then Jesus adds strength in Mark chapter 12. Uh, you know, he reiterates that 
really kind of clarifies that it's our mental, physical, spiritual health. They're all tied together in the worship of our God. Yeah. And and when one of those things becomes off or, or is, is not worshiping God, and we're not worshiping God with that aspect of who we are, it's right. going to throw other things off right. as well. And, yeah, uh, it's just like you said, we're never meant to be separated from our bodies. The final state is Jesus is the forerunner in that, the yeah. resurrected being uh, had a body. And yeah. so we're intended to be body and soul in one. So there is a lot of significance in the body. God created Adam and Eve perfect in their bodies. Yeah, that's right. And so that's really important for us to just begin there. But also we know that God refers to our bodies as a temple. Mm -hmm. You know, God shows a great concern for how we treat our bodies. We can look to first Corinthians six. We're told that our body's a temple and that we should not excuse sin in the body, but we should seek to resist it. That's right. Now this passage is talking about sexual, sexual immorality specifically, but I believe it can be applied to all bodily sin. That just happened to be the sin that they were speaking of that they were excusing. That's right. Yeah. And that's the thing. It's like you're, whatever you are using your body for, mm -hmm. whatever is, is involved with your body, it, it's going, it, it's going to, to need to be used as a temple of God. It is the temple right. of God because, um, as a believer, we know that the Holy Spirit dwells in us. You know, Christ uh, has come. He tabernacled with us by becoming a human being and taking on flesh. And after he left, he then sent the Holy Spirit to to indwell us. Mm -hmm. And so, so that's amazing. And that's what we need to know that as redeemed people, we are owned by Christ. He right. is the boss. Right. Yeah. It's that verse, first Corinthians six, 19 and 20 says, do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own. You were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. That's right. Jesus has bought us with his blood and we are his, and we need to use everything, mind, heart, soul, and body to glorify him. That's right. And oftentimes we think about things like, you know, I've, I've heard people say our body's a temple, so don't smoke cigarettes or our body's right. a temple, so don't drink alcohol. Uh, and that's true. We have to, that's a part of health, but that's the thing. There's no small sins, right? The, right. The, these are, those are kind of the big ones that we point to right. that are obviously right. harming us, but there's a lot more that we can talk about. Right. We're told in first Corinthians six twelve, don't be controlled by anything. And that, right. that does mean we talk about gluttony and laziness. Those are two of the things that we fight against when it comes to the area of health and of our body. And really in our culture, these are, con and in the church, these are considered respectable sins. That's right. But really there's no such thing as a respectable sin, is there? I remember growing up and, and noticing like it was a, it was a, it was the thought of a child, but I thought, uh, every pastor was, uh, a large, large man. Right. And, uh, and they loved fried chicken. Yes. And, uh, that was just my, and that was because that was a lot of my experience. And, uh, you know, while these were godly men, they also wrestled with certain, certain sins. They were right. human beings. Mm -hmm. They, they wrestled with this stuff right. as we all do. Um, but that's the thing we have to take this seriously because right. the Bible takes it seriously. Right. And in Proverbs 23, it even says, if you sit down with a king, uh, pay attention to what's in front of you. And if you are a man of great appetite, Put a knife to your throat. Right. It, it, that's a really intense statement mm -hmm. about gluttony. Yes, I 100% I agree. I also think we have to make sure that in this area, we understand that everybody is a little bit different. That's right. There are different body types and genetics play a, a huge role in our lives. And so there are people that without trying are very thin. Yep. And there are people that don't really have to try hard to gain weight. That's and right. that's, that's part of knowing who we are mm -hmm. and what our genetics are about. But listen, that's no excuse for gluttony or laziness. They're always sins and they oftentimes will lead us to obesity. So it's, it's not that 
we're excusing sin by by who we are, but just knowing who we are and how right. how we can work through that. Well, and I want to add to that, like it's not just obesity, but like you can be a very uh, seemingly healthy looking person, yes, and be very unhealthy right. in your in your heart and lungs, and I mean those those scientifically like cholesterol, you, you have high cholesterol, and all that stuff without necessarily looking like right. it. And so gluttony and and laziness will take a toll on you whether it looks like it or not right because there's some people mm-hmm. who eat really well but like you were talking about the genetics and all the things make it really hard so mm-hmm. so there's there's a lot to be considered here and that's why we want to take a balanced and realistic approach to right. this we're not trying to shame anybody right but we got to take we got to take it seriously yeah, because we, we got to yeah. come to terms with this if the, if there is sin in your heart if there's even in one of these what we call respectable sins you know we must we must mortify them we must kill them and we must allow the the Lord to do that work in our lives so that that sin does not reign in our lives and and ultimately in that God will get the glory yeah when when we do that so and that's the whole point right we need to glorify God and be an example to others that's there's two reasons here and we see this in 1 Corinthians 10:31 Romans 12:1 you know Implicit in both of these verses is the fact that we are accountable to others and that we are to be an example of godliness to others. And so we can't do that if we do not honor God with our bodies. That's right. Everything is about bringing glory to God. And through that, we're an example to others. And that's why it's really important as we think about this and as we are doing this, we, we're thinking about this in ways of, of health. Mm-hmm. This is about our health and and being good stewards of our bodies, what right. we've been given, and uh, and not not being judgmental towards other people and being right. offensive and 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 um, and really just hateful right. towards people. That was one of the things I really couldn't stand as a personal trainer. You know, I, I knew plenty of people who are really healthy who just talked terrible about people right. who were who were unhealthy but trying to do something about it. Right. And that's what we were there for is to help them, not right. judge them and not make fun of them. That's, right. that is honestly, that, that, that'll get me about as angry as anything. <laughs> yes. And so we're not here yes. to, to judge anybody. We're yeah. here to help people yeah. and ourselves. Yeah. yeah. If, if, if you are a healthy person, don't judge other people, help them. That's you know, right. Don't comment on someone's body in an off- offensive, judgmental way. You may have to exhort someone, but it needs to be coming out of a relationship and it needs to come out of love. That's right. So, you know, we we are here to encourage one another. Find ways to, you know, hey, come come exercise with That's me. Right. Let's go on a walk together. Let's go grocery shopping. You know, f- help them create healthy meals, cook together. I mean, there's all kinds of ways you can help somebody other than just pointing a finger and saying, boy, you're fat. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And so we've got to find those ways and and do that. And uh, and really, we're called to to do this and to be wise um, and receive God's blessings. Right. God says to if you're not wise, ask for wisdom. You know, we've talked about this many times on our on our podcast. But right. you know, our 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 life is a blessing from God. Right. And well, we long, know long life is a blessing. Specifically, that's true. Yeah, you're right. God tells us that if we obey Him and we follow Him we will be blessed with long life. That's right. And so we have to understand though, that as we, when it comes to our health, there are things that we can do and often do that are necessarily making our lives shorter. Right. And, uh, and that's what we've really got to look out for. Some of those things that, that we are doing, eating, whatever it is. Um, and we need to ask for, for wisdom. That's part of the problem. Sometimes people, I know for me, there's many times I just didn't know right. what, what I should be doing. Yes. And it's until you start right. looking for it and asking, that was one of the things I loved about your, you know, what you've been doing is you, um, ask, you mm-hmm. just ask questions and you're trying to learn and you're just being humble mm-hmm. in the approach. And that is the most important thing. Right. That's what, that's how you have changes by humbly right. seeking it. Right. Yeah. First, you know, I love James one where it says, ask God for wisdom and he will give it, believe and do not doubt. And he will give you the wisdom that you need. And also on top of that, God has created us to think and to learn. We know we have a lot of science, body science. We know what can kills us, can kill us. We know what it means to live a healthy life. And again, we're going to talk more about this. You and I are not like 
we're just going to eat broccoli and right. broiled fish. You yeah, know, that's no. not, that's not our perspective. Yeah. We have a very realistic perspective. Yeah, I told you what I had for lunch today. Right. <laughs> I'm uh, not going to say it on the air. <laughs> but we do know what can prevent many diseases by being healthy. So why would we not do that? And, and to be honest, if we think about this, we can do so much in our, in our golden years if we're healthy. And yeah. I want to tell you something. I love our seniors in our oh, church. Yeah. They are the lifeblood of our church. They help out in food pantry and missions and so many things. I think I want to, when I see them, I think I want to be that. When like I'm a that. senior, mm -hmm. I want to be active and serving and living every moment that I can possibly live for the Lord. And so if we know what makes us healthy and what's going to help us do that, why would we not do it, right? Yeah, that's right. I mean, we are... I, I I don't want to say that we are creating our future because God's the one in control of that. God's right. creating it, but but He's given us the steps. He's given us the wisdom to know how to do that, right. and uh, that it's all part of His plan. And um, so, being good stewards of our body really just makes that happen. Right. And uh, so, we're trying to focus on those things, and we want to train. But you know, on the flip side, we don't want the health, the quest for health, to become an idol. Have you seen this? And uh, have you seen this happen? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's it's definitely a temptation because, and you've even said it, uh, I'm not trying to steal your thunder, but it, it's like a rabbit hole yeah. that you can just keep going down um, because it, it it's very easy mm -hmm. to, to pursue health for vain glory. Right. It's for, you know, it can easily become for your glory. Right. Because especially once you start seeing good results right. and you start looking better, uh, feeling better, um, it, you think you are better. Right. And that's not God glorifying. That's yeah. not what this is about. So you can't go from one extreme to the other. That's right. We got to focus on health. We're not here for, for bodybuilding, you know? Right. I'm not saying that's bad or wrong. No. But what, what I'm saying is, most of us need to have a really good perspective and use our health for to glorify God, not to glorify the self. That's exactly right. Yeah. And the way to do that is to is to train. Yeah. Is to be disciplined. Where, you know, first Timothy four, seven through eight tells us that training for godliness has great value. Um, but the body training the body has little value. So we have to have a good perspective on this and remember that we're really seeking godliness right. in the training of our body. Um, the, training our body and having good health isn't the most important thing. Right. It's the godliness that we're seeking in that. Yeah, our priority should be spiritual things, prayer and Bible study, but the body must not be neglected. Even though it says training for godliness is superior, it does say there is value, even though it says there's little value, there's That's a right. little value. There is value in training the body as well. It just has to be in the right in the right, right perspective, order. right? That's right. So the body must not be neglected if we too are to obey God's word and be disciplined. And that's really what it comes down to is self-control and right. discipline, which is a fruit of the spirit. Mm -hmm. um, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Right. And so if we are able to have self-control, that is really going to affect... That's the majority of what we're talking about is really just being able to control our appetites, um, not just our like appetites for food, but right. our, our, our desires in right. general. Isn't that so much of life though? I mean, we have to, we have to seek to be disciplined to con sin has an endless appetite in our lives, whatever the sin is. And that's why we have to seek to be disciplined and control and put ourselves under the authority of Christ in these things. And so, you know, that's a basic theology and caring for our, our bodies. Um, so if you hear that and you say, you know, I really do want to make some changes, we're going to talk more specifically about food and exercise over the next couple of episodes. But, you know, there's a book that I read early on, uh, called winning the food fight by Steve Willis. And this was recommended by a seminary professor that ended up losing a ton of weight and the same thing. He kind of had this, this sort of, um, spiritual revival in his yeah, mind, knowing yeah. that my body, his body did not glorify the Lord. And so he sought to lose weight and to get healthy as well. And so he read this book, he recommended it on Facebook. I saw it, I picked it up and read it. It's a great, great book. It's, it's from a pastor. It's got a pastor's heart and he outlines a biblical plan for change. 
So step one is to make up your mind to be different. And I love this quote. It says, change will never take place until the pain of staying the same is greater than the pain it takes to change. Yeah. Isn't that a great quote? Yeah, that's a really good quote. I think that's the thing that I'm pretty sure I know the professor you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've heard his story and the pain of staying the same is death. Yes. Um, And the pain of staying the same might not always equal death for for you, but it can equal just not being able to do what what you want to do, not being able to enjoy time with your family. Um, Once you recognize that, that's when we say we need to make a change. Yeah. So we need to change in thinking and an attitude, not just to say, man, I want to be thin, but I want to be healthy. Right. Yep. And that's going to look different for different people. Remember God created a different body types, different way. I mean, all, you know, I wish I was six, three and could dunk a basketball, but I'm five right, ten, right. and I'm not, I'm probably never going to be able to dunk a basketball. Yeah, that's right. As hard as I try. <laughs> that's and that's me neither. okay. Me neither. And well, that's, but that's not my goal, but that doesn't mean I can't be healthy in, in my perspective. That's right. And there, there's, that's like saying, you know, people like to say, be happy with, with, you know, the body you're in. Right. And, and there is a truth behind that. But a lot of times people use that as an excuse to just be fine with anything, you know, no matter what is going on in your life, just be happy about it. And that's like saying, yeah, just be happy with a car that's broken down. And it's like, no, maybe you need to be happy with the car you have. It might not be a Corvette, but, uh, it's still a good car, but it might need to be fixed from time to time. Right. Exactly. And that's what we're talking about is just making sure we're operating to the best that we can for the glory of God. And that's where we've really got to seek God's grace in this. Yeah. That's you know, the next so step, step right? one, make up your mind to be different. Step two, seek God's grace. You know, we, we look at Romans chapter seven, verse 15, where Paul says, for I do not understand my own actions for, I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing that I hate. You know, there is an implication here that we are sinful beings. Those of us that are redeemed by Christ are, are freed from that, but we still have the, the the flesh that we wrestle with. And oftentimes, don't we find ourselves in that place, right? Doing the thing mm-hmm. that I don't want to do. Yeah. Oh, you know, God, I want to follow you so much. And that's where we have to seek God's grace in that. And I love that he comes back at the end of this chapter, and he says in verse 24, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So that, so then I myself serve the law of God with my mind, but with my flesh, I serve the law of sin. Meaning that now we are under, we are under, we're under grace with the Lord and we need to seek grace and ask God for help. And God will help us in, even in this quest for health. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's why, you know, it comes from the spirit. It's a spiritual fruit of self-control and discipline that it comes from God. It is a gift of God. And, and sometimes we don't have it in our lives because we're not asking for it. And that's why, you know, we've got to seek that grace of God. Um, But then the third plan, the third step is after you've made up your mind, you're seeking God's grace, you start to develop a plan. And so you're, you know, we've we've said this before, and uh, I'm glad you found this. It's from Benjamin Franklin, right? Yeah, I uh, like this quote. Failing to plan is planning to fail. Yeah. And that I've is so said that so before. True. I didn't know Ben Franklin said it. I didn't it, either. I'm glad you found <laughs> that. Yeah. But that's so true. Yeah. That is just absolutely true. Yeah. And uh, so we've got to set... Goals. Yeah. What uh, is your goal? Goals. How do you want to accomplish it? Don't just have a weight goal. That may be part yeah. of it, but do something more real. Like I want to climb a mountain That's or right. I want to run a 10 K or, you know, it could be as simple as I just want to keep up with my kids. Yeah. You know, I want to go on a mission trip and you know, all, whatever your goal is, don't just make it about weight loss, make it about doing something else. That's going to help you mentally get to where you want to get. You know, when I started, I couldn't even do one regular push up. I know that sounds weak, sound like a weakling, but I did the modified push ups, you know, on the knees, you know. Yeah. And uh, now I can do more than 10, actually did 12 the other day. Nice. Uh, in a row and do three sets of that in my workout set. So that's, you know, that's included in the other things I'm doing. I want to be able to get up to 20 in one set, you right. know. I also have a goal this year to, by the end of the year, to do a pull-up, unassisted pull-up. 
And, you know, those are things that I can focus on and do that are, that are fun goals for me, you know, not just yeah. like, Oh man, I want to lift this much weight or I want to lose this much weight or whatever. It's, it's just fun to challenge yourself and to find these kind of sort of like little challenges along the way. Yeah. And that's a, that's a good point. It's gotta be a little, and, and it's got to be a realistic thing. Don't set a goal that you are definitely not going to meet because right. that's going to be, uh, you're going to get depressed. I've done that many times where I'm like, I'm going to do this. And then I, it's like, way beyond my grasp and uh and i and i'm gonna lift a thousand pounds yeah, and i and i give up because i can't do it and so you've got to you've got to set realistic goals and anyone you know the the pros the the people who are um just endurance monsters they can endure anything or they can lift anything they look at people uh who are just beginning people who can only do one pull up people who can only do one push up and they and they are like encouraged they're they're you know applauding you. Mm -hmm. They're cheering you on right. because they know what it's like. The, well, they, the people who are really right. into this and know what this is really like, um, they know that that's where everyone starts. Right. Exactly. And so we've got to start there though. So yeah. make a plan, even if it's just be, be specific, create the steps. What is it going to take for you to get there? Yeah. Is it going to take, you know, getting, you know, getting to the gym, what, what gym, when are you going to go? Are you going to do workouts at home, yep. watching YouTube videos or whatever, or, you know, how are you going to eat? You got to go to the grocery store. You know, all of this takes some planning. Mm -hmm. And I love this saying, how do you eat an elephant? One, One bite, bite at, a at a time. So just take small steps. Listen, if you just start making small changes, just say, hey, I'm going to make one small change. It'll make a big difference. Then the next time, I'm going to make another small change. You know, my goal at first was just go to the gym two times a week. Then now I'm up to three times a week. You know, probably, I don't know if I'll get any more than that. Let's not get crazy here. <laughs> Let's not get crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, when I was working out, it was, okay, I'm working out. I'm at the gym and I work out for 30 minutes. Right. You know, now it's an hour, you know. So, I mean, it's just, it's things like that. You, you take small yeah. steps. But listen, this has been 10 months. Can I remind right. everyone? Yeah, yeah. This is 10 months. And I'm not to, I'm not to my goals yet. I'm not where I want to be. It's, I got lots more work to do. Yeah. But this is... This is not something that's going to happen quick. And anything with the body, mm -hmm. you can attest to this, uh, takes a long, takes a while. Oh yeah. So it's do not expect results overnight. And if anyone promises you results overnight, that's a gimmick. That's a gimmick. Walk away. And those things won't last. Yeah, we're going to talk about some of that. I'm excited to get into some of that because that was really <laughs> helpful for me when I first started. Is realizing this is a lifestyle. Right. It's a lifestyle of living your life for God. Right with your body right. and uh, it takes planning. You got to right. plan to live for God. Another thing is step four. And this is really, this is one of the big ones, Brian enlist help for accountability and support. Listen, oh, yeah. you will not make this without accountability. Listen, I have a, a guy that I meet at the gym mm -hmm. uh, when I go and I tell you, there are mornings that if I was not meeting him, I would not go to the gym. 100%. <laughs> I'm the same way. Yeah. Like, yeah. I've got a guy that I go with and there's been multiple times where I've, <laughs> force myself to get up and go. Cause you know, that person is expecting you to be there and they're going to be disappointed if you're not there. That's right. And so it's, there's it's accountability. Really and there, yeah. it's funny cause you both get there and you're like, man, I didn't want to come. And they're like, yeah, me neither. And it's like, <laughs> man. <laughs> but then once you get going, Oh, it's man, so good. I tell you, when you get done with your workout, you feel amazing. You're so glad you did it. And you're encouraged because that person is there and they encourage you. And it's just, it, it really does. And you know, sometimes good. I get in there and it's like, man, I'm exhausted, but I'm going to do something. Yeah. And I'm just glad I did anything. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. So yeah, you may not every time you go, you're going to, you know, set a record. Yeah. yeah. No, that's okay. But and so the, get yeah, help, ahead. get help, find help. You know, the church is full of people that can help you find mm -hmm. someone in your life group, find someone in the church and your friend group to just encourage you and, and find support. I have found so much support through you and other people in the church that have just encouraged me on this journey. And I could not have done it first with the, without the Lord. Uh, yeah. Number two, without other people. Well, and that's, that's life. I mean, that's what's so awesome about this is we think it's something other than normal life and it's not, it's right. a part of normal life. And so we've got to do that. And then step five, again, another part of normal life is to just practice self-control right. and persevere. Yes. Don't we've stop. got to remember it's about self-control. Self-control you mentioned is a fruit of the spirit. When we walk in the spirit, we will not, we will not be controlled by anything. Yeah. You know, the Lord is there to help us. And so if you fail, 
don't give up. Don't, Failure yeah. is a part of this. It's actually it's a part I, of this I, yeah. process. I tell the guy I work out with, I'm like, we're actually trying to fail today. Right. Um, you're right. going to try to go you as will, hard as you possibly can. You will fail in your eating. Yeah. You will fail in your workout, but just don't give up. Every day is a new is a new day, and God gives new mercies every day. So we've got to keep going. Remember, this is not a day by day journey. I mean, it is in a sense a day by day journey, and each step is important. But if you fail, you just get right back up the next day That's right. and keep going. That's how we succeed, is to keep following Christ, because He's the one that picks us up. So those are the steps. Uh, you know, make a uh, make up your mind to be different. Seek God's grace. Develop a plan. Enlist help for accountability and support. And practice self control and perseverance. That's great. Well, I think it's really important for us to just reiterate to everybody. You know, we're not saying that physical health is everything right. in the world here. Um, but it is a big deal in our culture, uh, especially, and uh, and we need to talk about it. Right, it's not something we can shy away from um, because God cares about, and He has a lot of instruction regarding how we take care of our bodies for His glory. That's right. That's and right. So, and you can do it. You know, we're going to talk more specifically in the next couple of episodes about some really important things that we need to do and to think about specifically in the area of food and exercise. But listen, anyone can do this. That's right. Okay. Uh, there have been many people that have, that have gotten healthy and overcome obesity. And maybe it's that just that you want to get healthy because your, your numbers are bad at the doctor, you know, your yeah. cholesterol is high or whatever, whatever the reason is you can do this. That's right. You Anyone can. can do this. Yeah, and and so you know, not everybody is uh, is going to hear this and and go off to be a world class bodybuilder. Um, <laughs> if you do, then you know, definitely give us a shout out. But uh, you, what you are going to find is if you start just integrating this these principles that we've been talking about today, you're going to find yourself feeling better. Right. Uh, you're going to find yourself living for the glory of God um, more fruitfully. And, uh, and, and you're just going to find that, that life is good, right. even though sometimes it's hard and that's okay. Amen. And so we hope that, uh, you'll join us with this and don't check out on us. This is good. We hope that you, it'll be a good thing for you. So, but we just promise stick with we got a, We have a realistic perspective on yes. food. We like, we like cookies as well. Oh, okay. Man. Don't, don't get me started <laughs> on cookies <laughs> or burgers or burgers. Oh my gosh. Here we go. Anyways. Okay. Well, Hey, we'll talk about all that other stuff later on. Uh, so thanks for joining thanks us. Thanks for joining us. We'll see and we'll time. see you next time. We're still in this election, day 43. We don't know who the president is. <laughs> we don't have a president. Guess what? We're not going to have one. We're going <laughs> back just, to the olden days. We're all grown ups. We can govern <laughs> ourselves. We're going to be fine. We don't need a president. Everyone can do what they think is right in their own <laughs> oh, sight. Yeah, that'll It'll go really fine. well. <laughs> well. There won't be mass chaos and murder everywhere. That'll go well. How'd that go for the people in the Bible? How's it going for people when there is a president? <laughs> right. Oh, man. It didn't go well. It didn't go well.